We wanted to find all the differences between Haribo in the US and the UK. This is Food Wars. Let's compare the sizes of Haribo's famous gold bears. In the UK, they come in these sizes. These remind me of Christmas. My family usually gets one of these and we get through it pretty much all in Christmas morning before our dinner. And in the US, our Haribo gold bears come in way more sizes. I couldn't get all of them today. Here's the ones I did get. What about the largest packs of gold bears? Well, in the UK, we were able to find this three kilogram bag of gold bears. This thing is an absolute beast. Just look how many gold bears you get in there. But wait, there's more. You also get these big bags. Down here we have a 28.8 ounce bag, so specific. Two pound bag, that was less intriguing, but it's got what it counts. Three pound bag. Yes! In the US we have this, the five pound bag, which is actually 24% smaller than the UK's largest. One thing I wanted to find out is how many of each flavor you're getting in a bag of gold bears. I've got a 160 gram bag here, let's find out. Okay, yeah. So pretty generous when it comes to the raspberry and the apple flavor. Not so generous when it comes to strawberry. Skimping on the strawberry, guys, which is annoying because one of the best flavors. Gold bears in the UK and US are a little different. Apart from the fact that the US ones are more colorful thanks to artificial food dye, they also have different flavors. All right, I got my European gold bears right here. Let's see what we got. In front of me are gold bears separated by color, this being the US and this being the European UK version. In the US, the flavors are green is strawberry, red is raspberry, translucent, pineapple, yellow, lemon, and orange. Get this, orange. I'm sorry, I'm just learning this now. Green being strawberry flavor makes no sense. What are you doing there? Red is strawberry, or maybe pink is strawberry. Green? No, come on. In the UK, the green ones are, of course, apple flavored, as it should be. Visually, they're obviously different. Let's give them a try. I mean, I don't know, like, I feel like, I don't know what gold there tastes like that. I actually don't know what my favorite one is. Often I'm just eating them in like handfuls and not really paying attention to the color. Strawberry's good. Give us more strawberry. Six in a bag, come on, man. They actually do taste of the thing they're supposed to taste of, which is actually harder to do sometimes than you give them credit for. I feel like the American ones, they're a lot hard, the gummy's a lot harder and the taste is, is more artificial. The size of the gold bears doesn't seem to change, but if you do fancy a bigger one, you can soak it in water overnight. Here's one I made earlier. Oh, it feels really gross. I mean, yeah, it kind of works. But before TikTok declares this the infinite gummy bear glitch, all that happened was osmosis. See, gelatin does not dissolve in water. So what it did is trap all the water inside its many strands, thus expanding the size of the bear. Ooh, it feels weird. It's, oh no. Oh no. Hmm. <laughs> Don't like that at all. <laughs> they have zero chewiness anymore. That just kind of like crumbles. Oh, no, 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 unpleasant. Here are all the Haribo products from the UK that you won't find in the US. And here's a lot of the Haribos you can find in the US you can't find in the UK. We're starting off with a banger here and something that I'm shocked is not available in the US, which is Haribo Tangfastics. I would say that alongside Star Mix, these are probably the most popular Haribo in the UK. These were introduced in 1997 and they're kind of like a sour candy alternative to Star Mix. Typically with Tangfastics, you're getting four shapes. You have these sour cherries, these sour cola bottles, you have these like crocodile animal things with the white sugar candy underneath, and then you have dummies, or as I think Americans call them, pacifiers. These are fantastic. I think the cherries generally are my favorites. You guys are really missing out. In terms of like sour candy in the UK, these are probably the number one. Next up, we have Jelly Babies. Jelly Babies are another classic UK sweet, although I would say that Bassett's probably has the main share of the market. They actually have a surprisingly dark origin story. Instead of Jelly Babies, these used to be called Unclaimed Babies, and someone thought it would be a good idea to name a sweet after those, and people found it funny. They have these yeah, slightly haunting faces kind of imprinted onto them. Look, in the US, we don't have Tang Fastics or Abandoned Jelly Babies, but we do have Sour Gold Bears. Fun fact about me, you ready for, for Joe's fun facts? I hate sour candy. I hate sour flavored anything. I don't get the appeal why people want sour candy. It's gross. Why do I want to eat something that makes my mouth taste like I just threw up? I don't think all sour candy is gross. And I haven't had these before, but watch me not like them. No thanks. This summer, Haribo released red, white, and blue gold bears. Let's get a look at that. Which are raspberry, pineapple, and berry flavored. 
Uh, you know this is American because it uses the colors red, white, and blue from our flag, unlike the colors of the UK flag. And we also got these, Happy Cola Booyah. Yeah, cola flavored. It does smell like cola. Could have more of a cola flavor, but yeah, no more product. I do like these. We also have Happy Cherries, which I could not get today. Next up, we have Super Mix. It's another classic from the UK. I think these have been around since 1996. They're in like a similar ballpark to Star Mix in that they are not sour, and they mostly focus on the kind of like chewy, soft textures. One notable Super Mix item not found in Star Mix are the milk bottles. Milk bottles are like a classic British sweet. They vary slightly, like some of them are a bit more like powdery, whereas this one is more of a chewy, gummy texture. To put it in an American perspective, maybe think of like a milk dud, kind of similar to that. Here we have Haribo Giant Straubs. Personally, love a giant straw. These are specified as giant because they're these kind of like long and flat ones. Whereas you can get straws, I think, from other manufacturers, which tend to be smaller and more like a domed, three-dimensional sweet. Compared to like a Star Mix, they have a much like chewier texture to them. That's actually because these aren't made with gelatin. These ones are made with a starch instead to help thicken them, which does make them vegetarian as well. Next up, we have Haribo Pontefract Cakes. The name doesn't give much away, but the packaging might do. These are licorice sweets, which are manufactured by Haribo. Pontefract is a village in West Yorkshire, which is famous for its licorice production. Pontefract cakes, I think, used to be made by a company called Dunhills, which Haribo acquired several years ago. So now they are Haribo Pontefract cakes. I do not like licorice, so I'm probably not gonna try these, unfortunately. I would say licorice is like an acquired taste, and it's one which, sadly, I have not acquired. One thing I wasn't really aware of, but that apparently exists, are these Haribo marshmallows, or chamallows, as they're called. I guess when you have, you know, a load of sugar and gelatin in your factory, it makes sense to also produce marshmallows. Things I like about this, uh, on the back it says, caution hot when barbecued. Caution hot when hot. Here we have Haribo wine gums. Another one that I wasn't sure Haribo manufactured, but apparently they do. Wine gums were some of the earliest gummy sweets introduced to the UK. I would say the company that's more known for manufacturing these is Maynard's rather than Haribo, but again, Haribo wants to get in on the action. Here are exclusive shapes and flavors. For gummy mixes, we have Unicornalicious, which is apple, blue raspberry, a berry punch, banana, and for the first time, cotton candy and tangerine. For those of you who love fun and fantastic mixes, we have the Fantastic Mix. All right, the worms have shown up finally. Rainbow worms, lemon, strawberry, and black currant, which is not a very popular flavor here in the US, very popular in the UK. We usually go grape. We have black currant, good for them. I mean, worms, you know what these look like. I'm starting to get a headache. Dinosaurs, right? Strawberry, mango, banana, melon, and black currant. Yo, black currant, moving in on the US. Frogs, ooh, peach flavor, which is kind of a weird choice for frogs. Let me ask you guys a question. If you had to do a frog-shaped candy, what flavor would you make it? Yeah, so, that's good. Sour apple. Sour apple, that's good. What do you think? I have no proof of this, but I think a lot of working for a company like this is being like, we need a new shape and we need some fun flavors. And it's just like a whole build, a whole like whiteboard, top to bottom, every shape they can make and like every flavor they can make. And they're just like, ah, frogs, peach, go. Uh, I do, here's the thing, I do like peach flavored stuff, so I think those are very good, but I would never have gone, if I saw that in the store, been like, oh yeah, frogs, peach. Alphabet letters. We have the Smurfs for everyone over the age of 47, which come in flavors of strawberry and raspberry. These came out in the US in 2013 for the Smurfs 2 movie. I for real did not know there was any Smurf movies until right now. Are they any good? Harry, have you seen them? While I also unfortunately have not seen the Smurfs movies, the Smurfs being available in the US gives me a chance to talk about something that Brits love, which is European Haribo. For me, there are a few greater pleasures than going to a random European country on holiday, walking down the snack aisle, and picking out a few random things that you would not usually find at home. Some other good European examples for me include the French having Orangina Haribo, as well as Dragibu, and the Germans have Haribo Peaches or Pfircher. And rainbow mini frogs. Regular sized frogs are only peach, but if apparently in mini form, strawberry, lemon, orange, and raspberry. We actually have a fair few vegetarian options. Here we have these Troppy Slices. These are tropical flavored gummies. We have blood orange, pineapple, and watermelon. Similarly to these straws, they are made with a starch rather than a gelatin, so they are vegetarian and again have that quite dense, chewy texture. Another vegetarian option are the sour sparks. They come in these lightning bolt shapes and each one has two flavors in the same gummy. You have a raspberry and pineapple, there is also an apple and cherry, and a cola and lemon. Those flavors broadly seem to go together. We even have a vegan option. These are the rainbow strips, the zing version. 
It seems like what makes these vegan versus vegetarian is that they do not have beeswax in them, whereas a vegetarian one like this does. One product that I really wanted to get, but unfortunately the delivery did not come through, were awesome axolotls. These are a new addition to the Haribo lineup, and apparently they are gummy sweets with foam bases, and they come in strawberry, blackcurrant, pineapple, apple, and raspberry flavors. It's a response to a social media trend about axolotls. They're very popular online. Apparently videos of axolotls generated 3 billion views in 2023. I actually really wanted one as a pet. I thought they're very cute. They look like the Pokemon Mudkip, which is always great. So yeah, I will keep an eye out for those in the store. Next up, we have Haribo Soda Twists. These are basically just bigger versions of the Coke bottles. The twist aspect comes from the fact that each of them have two flavors in them. And they're also part of the Zing range, which I think again means you have that kind of citric acid granulated sugar on the outside. Oh, I said it before and I'll say it again. I do not like sour flavored candies. Not a fan of any of this. I don't understand why this is a thing. I think it's gross. But if you are, we have sour streamers. Oh. Sour cherry, sour blue raspberry, ugh. sour orange, and sour apple. Sour spaghetti. I don't know why they just do S apostrophe getty, why not sour spaghetti? Sour spaghetti. Ah, for all the Italians who want candy for them. Hmm. <laughs> Taste, they like puka. Oh, this is so sour. Why subject yourself to this? Sour Smurfs, ugh, no. And, what is this, oh, and why is this fizzy cola here? Maybe, maybe this is more of my alley, a, oh, sour and tangy, ugh. I'm surprised the, uh, the fizzy colas aren't an option in the UK. Uh, you guys look, call things fizzy, we don't. So right off the bat, it's like, fizzy's your word, not ours. Then we have a bunch more random options that I found. We'll start with these. These are the Haribo Bala Sticks. Most Brits will know these as strawberry pencils, but Haribo has their own version called Bala Sticks. Basically, the outside is almost like a strawberry licorice. And then on the inside, you have a slightly softer, almost creamy kind of like sugary filling. We also have Bala Sticks Zing. And then the final Bala option, Bala Bites. I was also able to find just a bag of fried eggs. I don't think I've ever seen these before until today, but here we are, Haribo fried eggs. Whereas the standard ones that you get in Star Mix, you have like a lemon jelly on top. These ones also have a raspberry and apple flavor. The theme continues of Haribo just like getting in on everyone's business. Haribo apparently make jelly beans as well. Here we have Haribo Funtasia. These kind of just seem like another version of Star Mix, to be honest. I, I, I get it to a degree, just like repurposing the same ingredients, but this seems unimaginative. Next, we have Strawberry Softies. The Strawberry Softies have such a distinct flavor and texture. It's quite hard to describe if you've never tried one because they're actually like quite solid. Like you squish them and there's quite a lot of resistance there. But then when you start eating them, your saliva hits it, they kind of dissolve. For this video, I was tasked with sourcing a box of happy, which apparently includes cupcakes, stars, hearts, and present shaped sweets. What I ended up getting slightly by mistake is a happy box, which I think is actually a French import just because we have the uh, French Haribo slogan on the side there. We don't have alphabet letters, but what we do have are spelly jellies. One limited edition product that I found was Football Frenzy Haribo. I guess limited edition because maybe they're released around like international football tournament times. But yeah, they are Haribo gummy candies in vaguely football themed shapes. Because we're filming our portion of this in late October, we currently have both Halloween and Christmas seasonal items available. Here we have Haribo Sour Skeletons. And then currently in the UK, we also have two Christmas Haribo options. Here we have Haribo Elf Surprises and Merry Mix. The surprise for the elves is that some of these are sweet and some are sour. And then this one is just a Merry Mix of shapes and flavors. Apparently these ones include a candy floss flavor and a marshmallow flavor. Little snowman, he's pretty cute. Smells like a milk bottle. I'm gonna taste that one too. I think these, instead of like, these are jelly babies, but I think they're supposed to be gingerbread men. They've got little like belly button things. I was trying to find a candy floss flavor, which apparently is in here, but now I'm increasingly realizing like candy floss is just sugar and all of these are sugar. So I guess you can call anything candy floss. The exact opposite of sour, sugar coated. We got watermelons, berry clouds. These feature the triple layer foam gummy. Wow, really soft. I like the texture of those. I think I like a little more snap, a little more bite to my gummy candy, so a little softer than I like, but I get it. 
We've got the Haribo berries, which actually look like actual berries. I think that's fun. Now, is this a good way to trick your kids into eating fruits? You get them eating these first, and then one day you're like, hey, they changed the formula. Now they're like squishier. <laughs> fruit salad, cherry, peach, orange, grapefruit, lemon, and passion fruit. Sugar dusted gummies. There's also a ginger lemon option, which we cannot get today. A type of sweet that Brits might not even know is a Haribo product are Malams. Fun word to say, Malam. These are really popular in the UK. Malam was actually bought by Haribo back in 1986. These do exist in America, which is not quite sure if they're the same over there as they are here. The thing with Malam is that it's kind of one type of candy that comes in a range of shapes. We have Malam stripes, we have Malam joysticks, we have Malam pinballs, and you can get Mal mix. The Mal Mix combines the stripes, the joysticks, and also the, I guess, original Malams, which are the individually wrapped rectangular ones. I'm gonna open up one of the Malam stripes and show you guys what it's like, just in case it is different in the US. Kind of in terms of texture and stuff, quite similar to like taffy in America, because it's really quite rigid. We also have Malam in the US, but it's not nearly as popular. We were not able to get any today. But looking online, we do have options of getting the stripes, the blocks with two X's, the Mal Mix. Crotchers, Cratchers, Crackers, and Pinballs. In the US, we also have an assortment of kosher products, including the Happy Cherries, Quoxy Frogs, Grapefruit, Sour Worms, and Tagada. I have no clue what any of that stuff is. Anyway, we got them somewhere. In the UK, 100 grams of Gold Bears contains the following. 343 calories, less than 0.5 grams of fat, of which 0.1 grams are saturated, 77 grams of carbs, of which 46 grams are sugars, 6.9 grams of protein, and 28 milligrams of sodium. Guess I shouldn't be surprised by the sugar, I'm a little bit surprised by the calories. I did not think there was that many calories in a gold pair. In the UK, the recommended individual portion size is actually just 25 grams. That's lower than the 30 gram recommended portion size in America. If you just ate 25 grams of gold bears, which is technically one portion, that would be 13% of your daily recommended sugar intake. In the US, a regular bag of gold bears per 100 grams has 330 calories, zero grams of fat, 0.33 grams of saturated fat, 76.59 grams of carbohydrates, 46.62 grams of sugar, 6.66 grams of protein, <laughs> and 16.65 milligrams of sodium. A 30 gram portion of gold bears will provide you with 14 grams of sugar, which is 28% of your daily intake. So there isn't much difference in nutrition between US and UK Haribo but the US's bigger portion size technically makes them a more unhealthy option in the US. And here are the Haribo Gold Bears ingredients in the UK. Just to pick out a few of the more confusing ingredients there, spirulina is actually a type of seaweed. Spirulina emerged as kind of the new blue food coloring after we stopped using blue one back in the UK quite a few years ago. Bilberries are technically from the same family as blueberries, but have a slightly darker flesh. Aronia is also known as chokeberry. The name sounds scary, but they are perfectly harmless. And the name choke comes from the fact that they have quite an astringent flavor, which really makes your mouth kind of pucker when you eat them. Here's everything in Haribo Gold Bears in the US. Our Haribo Gold Bears have artificial food coloring such as yellow number five, which is E103, red 40, which is E129, and blue and number one. In the UK, our Gold Bears contain no artificial colors or flavors. Artificial colors like red 40, yellow five, yellow six, and blue one are restricted in the UK since studies have linked them to hyperactivity in children. Healthline reported that in the last 50 years, consumption of artificial food dyes have gone up by a whopping 500%. And the biggest consumers are children. I wanna see if the colors make a difference. Let's get a side by side of the colors in each country. This row in front, US Gold Bears. This row behind are the UK Gold Bears. The first artificial food colorings were actually created as far back as 1856. Back then they were made from coal tar and today they're still made from petroleum. Can we make one without fossil fuels in it maybe, please? Haribo's in the US commonly contain carnauba wax. It's a vegetable wax from the carnauba palm of Brazil. Haribo ran into some trouble back in 2017. A German documentary aired which accused the company of purchasing carnauba wax that had been produced under conditions akin to modern slavery. Haribo launched an investigation and later said it found no evidence supporting these claims, but it has since switched suppliers, started using beeswax, and helped found an organization to source carnauba responsibly. One other thing to note is that most UK Haribos are gluten, milk, and nut-free. The exception there are the Pontefract cakes, which have gluten in them. 
Much of the gelatin used in Haribo's in the UK comes from pork. To that end, they offer kosher and halal products, which are either made with beef or fish gelatin. As we mentioned before, instead of gelatin, some of the vegetarian products are thickened with starch. In the US, however, Haribo uses wheat and dairy in some products, so everything in the US might contain traces of those. The US does offer vegetarian options like the Sour Streamers, Zing Sour Skeddy, and Kosher Haribo's. Both the UK and US import Haribo's from other countries from time to time to meet demand, so the company suggests checking the back of the packets. Let's check it right now. Look at that. Rosemont, Illinois. But these says they were made in Spain, and these were made in Brazil. This is globe trouting. For a brief moment back in 2016, Haribo's sugar free gold bears contained the sweetener lycosin. The gummy bears were lower in calories, but gave many consumers stomach issues that included intense cramping and in some cases, severe diarrhea. Some Amazon reviews described their experience as gastrointestinal Armageddon, a torrential flood of toxic waste, and power washing your intestines. Ooh. At most UK supermarkets, this 175 gram bag of gold bears will cost you £1.25. That's a cost of 71.4 pence per 100 grams. In the US, we do not have 175 gram portion size. We do have an 8 ounce or 226.8 gram bag. It costs Two dollars and eight cents. So, per 100 grams, it costs 91 cents. I'll round it up to 92 cents. So that's around 71p. So it looks like it's the same cost in each country. Nice. The name Haribo is actually a portmanteau of Hans, Riegel, and Bonn. Hans Riegel is the founder of the company, and he was born in 1893 in Bonn, Germany. Cut to World War II, and Haribo, as well as the rest of Germany, ran into a few issues. Hans Riegel actually passed away in 1945, and his two sons were taken as prisoners of war by the Allied forces. When the sons were released, they rebuilt the company quickly and successfully. Within just five years, Haribo had over a thousand workers. Haribo came back to the UK in 1972 when it brought the confectionery company Dunhills, the original manufacturers of Pontefract cakes. Haribo eventually made its way to the US in 1982 and had stiff competition from the likes of Jelly Belly that was then known as the Herman Golitz Candy Company, which has started making gummy bears in the US around 1991, and Trolley with its gummy worms. In terms of worldwide popularity, in 2024, Haribo ranked eighth among the top 100 global candy companies. In June 2024, Haribo announced plans to invest 300 million euros in a new factory in Germany to meet global demand. Over the years, Haribo has secured its status as one of the leading gummy manufacturers in the world. It produces 160 million gold bears every single day. Clearly, Haribo is still growing. As its website proudly states, they are the number one in fruit gummies worldwide. I think when it comes to Haribo, my personal favorites are just kind of the classics. I think Tang Fastix is probably my number one, followed up by a, maybe a gummy bear or a Star Mix. I do think the Haribo brand is really strong here in the UK. It's a lot of people's first choice when it comes to kind of gummy candies, especially seeing as pick and mix, I feel like has been on the decline for a few years. I could eat gummy nonstop. I could eat a truckload, I could just not stop eating gummy. But now I have a splitting headache because of all the sugar. So I do like all gummy flavored things, but for me, I gotta stay away from it because I can't stop. My teeth are killing me right now from this episode. Hey, thanks for watching this episode of Food Wars. Just a reminder, we have one here on the Food Insider channel or Insider Food, I forget what it's called now, every Sunday-ish. So be sure to subscribe, like the video, uh, watch the whole thing over and over again to help our average watch time, and be sure to comment below on anything you would like to see us compare and me eat until I get sick.